Hi, Lenny Gill, Life is No Yoke. I get a lot of questions about health and wellness, and this one was really weird. I got a question, can you compare vitamins to neutered bullets? And I'm like, what is that? I, sure, like there's really no comparison. Neither of them are really useful, but, oh, I know. People really wanna know the difference between Vitamix and Nutribullet. Ah, okay, I can do that. So what do I think of the Nutribullet? Well, it's not a Vitamix, but from what I hear, people love them. And it's usually for these five reasons. One, they're super small. Two, they're really easy to clean. Three, they're portable, great on the go. Four, they're really affordable, like under a hundred bucks. Five, the infomercial, it's magical. The nutrient extraction, the benefits, everything about it makes it seem like such a great product. So yeah, people like them. The only criticism is that they crap out. Like, like they literally stop working. If it's within a year, sometimes you can get Nutribullet to fix it, but their one year warranty really only covers manufacturer's defect. Knowing this, Nutribullet owners usually take one of two paths. Path one, they'll just get a new Nutribullet. And that's great, because they love their first one. And path two, they look to Vitamix to see if they can find something similar. Path two usually takes a little bit of research, or sometimes you can just do a free in-home trial. But people who have owned a Nutribullet and then tried a Vitamix usually say the same 10 things. I'm gonna tell you all 10 things and demonstrate what they're talking about when people are comparing Nutribullet versus Vitamix. Just one quick note, this comparison, Nutribullet versus Vitamix, wasn't really relevant until recently when Vitamix released its on-the-go models, the S-Series. The S-Series is a Vitamix with the same goals as a Nutribullet. Super small, super easy to clean, and super portable. Now let's get to the fun stuff. Let's take the Vitamix and the Nutribullet in the kitchen and show the 10 things that Nutribullet owners generally say after they've tried a Vitamix. So one of the first things I hear when people tell me they upgraded from a Nutribullet to a Vitamix is that my kitchen is so much less cluttered now. The Nutribullet comes with 12 pieces. All right, let's open up the boxes and I'll show you what I mean. So now that they're all unpacked, it's really clear that there's a lot more pieces with the Nutribullet than there are with the Vitamix. And we'll talk about the quality of each of those pieces in a little bit, so stick with me. But what's most important is when you're not using them. And when you're not using them, the Vitamix is a lot more compact. I can get the Vitamix down to three pieces. Watch, container, blade assembly, portable container, tamper, drawer, cabinet, counter, three pieces. But the Nutribullet, I can get it down to, I can make three pieces, but then one, two, three, but then I'm still stuck with three additional pieces, one of which is a blade. All right, I just wanna add one thing. One thing that would really bug me in my kitchen is that these things don't really stack. The next thing I hear all the time is it's so clear that the Vitamix is not made overseas. The Nutribullet, it comes with a two-prong flimsy power cord, and it's made of a lot of plastic, and cheap plastic, and that includes the drive socket. Now, it, it looks really nice, but the Nutribullet only comes with a one-year limited warranty, so it's clear that it's not built to last. The Vitamix, on the other hand, there's a pedigree behind the name Vitamix. And this model is no different than a full-size model. It's made with the same engineering and quality, and it's evident. I mean, you look at the, the heavy-duty three-pronged power cord, 
You look at the, the, the containers that are made with a double insulated material and all the important pieces are made with a hardened stainless steel. I mean, it's so clear that this is a quality machine. It comes with a five year, no questions asked, full warranty. I mean, this thing is built to last. So another thing I hear all the time is that the whole food green drinks are better. Why? It's because blend quality. Yeah, the Nutribullet can definitely make green drinks, but when they're made in a Vitamix, they look different and taste better. You can hardly taste the greens, watch. I make this green drink for breakfast or a snack, and it's so awesome because you can pack so many servings of fruits and vegetables into just one glass. Now since we're using whole fruits and vegetables, we're not gonna waste a single nutrient. Now the Nutribullet can do this too, but the result that we get from the Vitamix is a much more finely processed drink. And what that means is we're gonna get a, a more nutritional value from every ingredient. Plus, it looks and tastes so much better, so kids are less likely to say, yikes. All right, so we got everything loaded up in the Vitamix and the Nutribullet. We're gonna run them each for 30 seconds on 10 speed and on the one speed that it can run and see what we get. All right, let's pour them out and see what we got. Okay, so here's the drink with the Vitamix. Looks kind of nice. So this one might not look, these actually look the same. They look the same. Okay, this one's fine. This one has a, like a, a grassy aftertaste and I had to kind of chew a little bit. So the consistency is definitely different and I wouldn't say that this one, that, that either of them tastes better, but the one made in the Vitamix tastes less green. I put them both through a sieve, and while they both kind of sat there for a minute, after I pushed them through, the drink made in the Nutribullet left all this pulp. Now if the goal is a drink that has the most nutrient extraction and that tastes good, I think the answer is clear. And the berry smoothies, they taste better too. Why? Again, this is blend quality. The Nutribullet does a fine job of processing berries and seeds, but in a Vitamix, you're literally able to taste the insides of those seeds. And for you, that translates to more nutrient extraction. Watch. So this berry smoothie is one of my favorite smoothies of all time. It's the peanut butter and jelly smoothie. In it is a little bit of almond milk with a tiny bit of protein. I like 100% liquid pasteurized egg whites frozen strawberries, frozen raspberries, a little bit of ice, peanut butter, and a tiny bit of stevia to make it a little sweeter and to bring out all the flavors together. And since we're using the portable container, we're gonna add all the frozen ingredients first, followed by the softer ingredients, and then the liquid. All right, so we're gonna blend for 30 seconds and see what we get. They're pretty, they're really pretty. I like to touch them. It's kind of weird, but I do. See so yeah, how this one's kind of shaking? Not a huge deal, but this is definitely shaking. This is totally stuck. All right, they're, they're both done. We're gonna pour them out, have a sip, and see what they look like when they separate and after they've gone through a sieve. Mm. It's pretty. It's definitely pretty. 
and tasty. Oh, it's my favorite. There's a reason it's my favorite smoothie. One of my favorites. It's pretty too. All right, I'm gonna try this one first. It's really, really good. There are some seeds floating around in my mouth. This one, the one over here is like more like harmonious, I guess you could say. Okay, well let's put them through a sieve and see how they really did. All right, so both smoothies definitely left some seeds, but the seeds left from the Nutribullet are, are full, unbroken seeds, and there are a lot more of them. So I get it, when, when people say that they like their smoothies made in the Vitamix, their berry smoothies made in the Vitamix better, I, I, it makes sense. They're less gritty and they don't have to chew them when they drink them. Both of these machines are designed to be used on the go, but the Vitamix takes the portability to a whole nother level. All right, let me show you what I mean. This is one of my favorite blended drinks. It's a chocolate breakfast protein shake. It's got banana, peanut butter, almond milk, oatmeal, cocoa powder, and a little bit of stevia to bring out all the flavors. Now they're gonna come out basically the same, but what's important here is seeing how each of these perform on the go. I'm gonna go fast. Good catch. Okay, taking the drink made in the Nutribullet is really easy. You take the blade off the container, and now you have two choices. You can use this lid, which prevents spills, but you can't really drink out of, or you can use this lid, which makes you, which allows you to drink comfortably. The problem is, is you can't really drink and travel at the same time. This is like walking around with a, a coffee mug without a lid. The other problem is that the container is quite large, so it makes it, so it's very difficult to put it into a standard size cup holder. The handle also gets in the way too. Okay, time out, quick fact check. When I was editing this video, I wanted to be certain that what I was saying about the cup holders was accurate. So I tested the cup holders for each on an old car, a new car, and because it's on the box of the Nutribullet, my scooter. The old car definitely did not hold the Nutribullet cup. The new car, because the cup holders were made for coffee mugs, they fit fine, and my scooter well, it fit, but I wouldn't really recommend riding around with it because it didn't go all the way down. The Vitamix's portable container, on the other hand, fit perfectly in each one. Taking the drink made in the Vitamix to go is really easy too. It's designed so you can do everything that you need it to do with one lid. Watch. Take the blade, off of the container and put the lid on, which has a leak-proof seal. Screw it on, and now you can throw it in your bag or open it up like this and sip it out of the pour spout, which is a lot like a straw. The container also has this handy hook to put it onto a bag and is double insulated, so what goes in cold stays cold. So cleaning both of these machines is a breeze. When you're done, take the blade and rinse it under some hot water. Put it right in the top rack of the dishwasher. When you're done with your drink, rinse it out when you're at the gym or at the office. 
That way, when you get home, it's a lot easier to just throw it right in the top rack of the dishwasher with the blade assembly. All components of both of these machines are completely top rack dishwasher safe, except of course, the base motor. So the next thing I hear all the time when people upgrade from a Nutribullet is that the Vitamix literally replaces their food processor. To show what they mean, I'm gonna make one of my favorite recipes. It's called Detox Salad. And it uses some hard vegetables, cauliflower, carrots, and what is this, cabbage. For this detox salad, I'm gonna use the 40 ounce container and the tamper to gently push the ingredients down into the blade to get us a more efficient blend. I'm also gonna use the pulse function about eight to 10 times to get us that desired consistency, the same that we would get in a food processor. And we're gonna try the wet chopping technique and see what we get. The wet chopping technique, that's the first time I've ever done it, and it worked, it was great. So I'm gonna use that technique on the, on the cabbage and the carrots. Done. That was awesome. Check it out. That's like, I feel like that's quicker than a food processor. Maybe it's about the same. All right, carrots, we're doing wet too. Here we go. Done. So using the wet chopping technique, I got the exact consistency I was looking for in the Vitamix. Uh, now let's take a look at what we can get in the Nutribullet. Now there's only one speed on the Nutribullet, so I'm not really able to control it as well, but we'll see what we get. Is that fair? Wow, okay, okay, so that's good to know. When you push it down there, it starts going and it kind of locks in. So I wasn't able to stop it right away when I wanted to. Um, but let's see what we got. So these are too small for the consistency that we need for the detox salad, but let's see if I can get them to be a little bigger by stopping the Nutribullet a little earlier. <laughs> Okay, it was a little scary trying to stop it after just a brief second. Kinda didn't really want me to, but okay. I think we might have got our result. I mean, let's see. So you can see that the consistencies are similar, but over here with the Nutribullet, the small pieces are too small, and there are some large chunks kinda left over. Okay, so we're gonna try the cabbage now, and the goal is to get a consistent, medium-sized chop. Okay, so, I mean, this is actually pretty good, um, but we're like dangerously close to having a vegetable smoothie with how tiny some of these pieces are. And I think the big thing here is what I'm seeing is like there's a lot less control in chopping with the Nutribullet. Okay, let's give the carrots a try. To be fair, the Nutribullet doesn't actually claim to be able to chop vegetables, but we're giving it a chance because we're putting it up against the S30, which can. Okay, case in point, like I couldn't stop it there. Whatever. It's carrot pulp. Okay, so both machines chopped technically, but over here with the Vitamix, I had much more control and was able to get the consistency that I was looking for for my detox salad. Over here, really the only way to salvage this would be to turn it into a juice. People rave about the frozen alcoholic drinks that they can make in their Vitamix. Tonight, I'm having a luau. And I'm gonna make frozen mango Daiquiris. All right, so we're gonna put all the ingredients in, blend them up, and get this party started. All right, we've got mango, pineapple, lime, rum, and ice. So you can see that I've added the ingredients opposite, and that's because I'm going to flip the neutral container so everything will be layered the exact same. All right, so we're gonna blend them each for about a minute and see what we get. Oh, 
Look at how smooth that is. Oh, it smells so good. Can you see it? Oh, looks amazing. This could be good too. Okay, it also looks really good. Which is great. This one's similar. But if you get real close, you can see like, almost like little ice balls. They taste so different. When you take a sip off the top half of the one made in the Vitamix, it still tastes like a daiquiri. But when you take a sip from the top half of this one, it kind of tastes like mango pineapple stew. Nothing like a daiquiri. Okay, so I'm gonna give them both one good stir and then see what happens after about three minutes. Well, let's just say I go for a swim. All right, we let them sit for a little bit and they both definitely separated, but the one over here separated a little more. The Vitamix looks different, it tastes better, and it's just creamier. I definitely would prefer to serve it to this one, but I'm gonna drink them both. Beyond alcoholic drinks, people love their Vitamix because it helps them entertain. I'm gonna make a restaurant taste style salsa, but people also tell me they're making guacamole, artichoke dips, uh, roasted red pepper hummus, all of which are equally as simple to make. Or my personal favorite, and it's on my blog, you can check it out, it's called cashew queso. So good. We're gonna use the 40 ounce container, and if you're wondering about the yield, that's about the same as about two or three store-bought hummus containers. So with a recipe like salsa, texture is so important. So you need to be able to have complete control over the consistency. I know that the Vitamix is gonna be able to handle this really well by using varying speeds and the pulse function. The Nutribullet only has one speed, so it probably won't be able to create the desired texture that we're looking for, but we're gonna give it a shot. Okay, so I've loaded everything up except for about half of the tomatoes that I'll add at the end in hopes to have a varying consistency throughout the salsa. Okay. Two pulses wasn't enough, and then three, I couldn't take it off. So like, you can see that it, it is tough to like kind of have the control that you're really looking for. This looks okay, but it's a little, it's definitely over-processed, but let's see what happens. Let's put the second batch of tomatoes in. Let's see what we get. It's pretty good. Um, I'd say that the small stuff is a little too small, kind of like a, a juice texture. And the big stuff is, hmm, I guess it's where we want it to be, probably a little too big. But nevertheless, this probably tastes okay. Here's a big, here's a couple of big chunks. So I've added everything into the Vitamix except for about half of the tomatoes. And we're gonna start by pulsing it about two or three times. Once that's done, we'll add the rest of the tomatoes to get that varying texture. I'll use the tamper if I need it to push ingredients into the center for that uh, desired even consistency for this first batch. So that was about 10 pulses, but it looks freaking awesome and we still haven't even added the second round of tomatoes. So you can see how everything is chopped, 
kind of like big chopped pieces. That looks freaking amazing. And it's, it's pretty clear when you kind of compare. Can you see the difference? All right, so I like my salsa a little bit chunky. So we're gonna add that second round of tomatoes to get that varying consistency, that varying texture that we're looking for. Look at that, that is amazing. I need to have some right now. Are you recording this? Because this is the better than any salsa I've ever had. And when we, grew, when we start our garden and have fresh tomatoes and fresh jalapenos and fresh onions, it's gonna be like mind blowing. It is so good. Oh. This will probably be fine tasting, but like you wouldn't want to serve it. It's kind of embarrassing. This is like a different color. No, it's not good. Mm. No, it's not good. It tastes like tomato juice. Okay, the results totally speak for themselves in color and consistency and even taste. But if you take a look real close, the salsa made in the Nutribullet is over processed. It's, it's kind of like a juice and it even has kind of a frothy layer to it. The salsa made in the Vitamix is, looks restaurante style with a varying texture and, and a vibrant, incredible color. And I tried it off camera and I'm gonna try it again, but it is phenomenal. Look at this. Oh, so I hear a lot that people are really excited about being able to make their own nut butters now that they have a Vitamix. A lot of times they say they've tried in a, in a Nutribullet, but it kind of turned out messy and not the way they expected. If you've ever made your own nut butters, you know how amazing they are compared to store-bought. So much fresher and flavorful, and that's because there's no additives or preservatives, just all natural whole food ingredients. This is cashew butter, and I'm using raw cashews, but you can use any other kind of nut, like peanuts or almonds, to make your own. I'm making a sweet spread with cinnamon and honey, which is really good on a muffin, or as a dip for fruits, or as like kind of like a snack sandwich with graham cracker and banana. You can substitute other spices for a more zesty spread, for rich flavors, for things like a peanut sauce or a marinade. For this cinnamon cashew butter, I took two cups of cashews and soaked them for a few hours. I'm gonna add three tablespoons of honey and a little bit of cinnamon. All right, let's try the Nutribullet. Want to get close? I don't think it's really happy with what we're doing to it. It smells like burning. It's like big time burning. I'm gonna stop it. It's smoking. It's smoking. It's smoking. That's bad. Wow. If you could smell the smoke. Okay. So now <laughs> I get when people say that it got kind of ugly. All right, we're gonna load up the Vitamix, see if we can make some cashew butter. Okay, so you wanna make sure the lid's on tight. We're gonna use the tamper to push the nuts into the blade. You don't have to worry about the tamper hitting the blades because it's designed to not make any contact. We're gonna start on variable speed one and go all the way to 10. After about a minute, we're gonna hear a loud chugging noise, and that's a good thing. We'll slow it down a little bit to speed eight to get a creamy consistency that we're looking for. Here we go.
you can really smell the aroma of this fresh cashew butter. Like the cinnamon and the honey and the nuts is amazing. And the consistency is creamy and incredible too. Since there's no preservatives or artificial additives, you can store what's left over in your fridge for about a week. All right, admittedly, it's not really fair. The Nutribullet is not made to make nut butters, but when people say they're so excited about making nut butters, this is what they mean, and I get it. It's awesome. I can't stop eating this stuff. People get a blender for one reason, and that's to live a healthy lifestyle. But there's one thing that healthy people don't like to give up, and that's dessert. Fortunately, with the Vitamix, you can have your cake and eat it too. All right, we're making a strawberry lime sorbet, and this recipe is actually from the book that you get with the Vitamix S30. There's a bunch of them just like that in here, but you can really make sorbet with any type of frozen fruit that you have. I love sorbet because it's dessert, but it's dairy free and pretty healthy. We're gonna use the tamper to push the ingredients down into the blade. Now the Vitamix is powerful enough to handle rock solid fruit, but we wanna make sure we're at variable speed 10 because when we're there, that activates the fan to keep the Vitamix from overheating. Beautiful. You'll know it's done when the consistency is even and smooth. But when you open up the lid, first of all, it smells amazing, but you can see the four-sided vortex, sort of like a, a clover that's created by the blades pulling the ingredients down. Come take a look, it's really cool. All right, so here it is, a strawberry lime sorbet, and it looks amazing. The consistency is just about sorbet like when it comes out of the Vitamix, but if you want a little harder, you can pop it back in the freezer for a couple of minutes. Mm. Oops, dropped. Mm. That was so good. All right, you wanna know why this is great? Because this dessert is sugar-free, it's dairy-free, and there's no added anything. It's just Homemade salad dressings are on a completely different planet than anything you could buy in a store-bought bottle. And when people switch over to the Vitamix, they're able to easily emulsify citruses and, and vinegars with oil. And that's really the basis of any salad dressing. All right, so I'm gonna start by adding my citrus, so a whole fresh grapefruit. I'm gonna add a little bit of honey to sweeten it up a little bit. A tiny bit of apple cider vinegar a little hot pepper, just a dash to give it a kick, and then a couple shakes of salt and pepper. Okay, so we're gonna put the lid on and the plug in, and we're gonna blend for about 20 seconds on variable speed five. And this is gonna get everything mixed up, but it's still gonna leave a little bit of a texture. Okay, then I'm gonna turn it down to variable speed one and take the lid off and add our olive oil to let the Vitamix emulsify the liquid. It smells amazing. And then after about 20 seconds, you turn it off. All right, so we have this amazing vinaigrette with a little bit of texture from the grapefruit. My plan is to put it over an arugula salad with some nuts and some berries, but you could even use this as a marinade for fish. This stuff is incredible, check it out. It's amazing, look at this. So I just wanna point one more thing out. You can actually use the to-go container and the lid to store the salad dressing in your fridge for up to a week, 
Or if you're bringing a salad to a dinner party, keep the dressing separate from the lettuce and toss it when you get there for the freshest, most delicious salad. So the other week when I was in Puerto Rico, I had the best soup ever. It was so smooth and rich and unbelievably flavorful. And so I asked the guy, how did you make this? It's so good. And he says, the secret is to puree everything. So what does that mean? That means that everything goes into a commercial grade blender. And a majority of the time, that means into a Vitamix. Now, pureeing ingredients for restaurant quality soups is a lot of times just the first step, but Vitamix machines are known to actually be able to make soup start to finish. Cold water and vegetables into hot soup in about six minutes with one container. And that's what I'm gonna show you how to do today. Okay, so I just tested the Nutribullet to see if it could turn liquids hot through friction alone. I ran water in it for about seven minutes, um, and it worked, but the problem was, was that I could feel it was almost burning hot on the outside, and the other thing was when I opened it up and took the blade off, it actually popped, like there was so much built up energy, it, it made a noise. Kind of scared me. I don't think that the Nutribullet is meant to do this, although it did decently well. All right, I know the Vitamix can handle this because it's designed to make hot soup. The motor's strong enough where it won't burn out. The container is insulated so it won't burn my hands. And the top is vented so energy can be released. I'm gonna make a recipe called Louisiana Gumbo. It has a whole bunch of vegetables and some chicken and sausage and rice. I just made it up and it's gonna be freaking delicious. I loaded everything in and it's beautiful, it's colorful, it's nutrient dense. I've got some chicken broth, actually, and you can use vegetable broth or just water in a bouillon cube. I have some tomatoes, onions, yellow pepper, red pepper, celery, uh, garlic, salt, and a little bit of Cajun seasoning. And this is the basis for any soup that you make in the Vitamix start to finish. Okay, I just changed the name of this recipe. It's called Lenny's Louisiana chicken and sausage gumbo. We're gonna turn it to variable speed 10, let it run for five or six minutes, and it's gonna be amazing. Here we go. So it'll kind of pull everything down. Right now there's still some, you can still kind of see some tomatoes and celery. Okay, so we let it run for about eight minutes and the machine actually turned itself off. Probably a safety precaution because it doesn't feel like it's overheated. Um, let's take the lid off and see if we get any steam. Feels warm, but not burning. You see the steam? Let's check the temperature. So it's like 145 degrees, it's delicious. I poured a little bit out into a cup to make a little bit of room for, for our meat and other ingredients. So what we'll do is we'll add our chicken sausage, our chicken, and we'll put in a little bit of rice. And what we'll do is we'll use the pulse function. Okay. Voila. Gumbo. All right, here it is. Lenny's Louisiana Chicken Sausage Gumbo. Made in a Vitamix, start to finish. I think it's lunchtime. Mmm, mmm, that's so good. So another thing I hear is, what took me so long to get a Vitamix? Well, I'm not here to tell you I told you so. I'm here to tell you that you're doing great and I'm proud of you. Life is no yoke. For Vitamix savings, recipes, and recommendations that you won't find anywhere else, visit my website, lifeisnoyoke.com. You can type it in in your browser or click the link below.